Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Landmark environmental treaty meet begins in Chile. Israeli warplanes bomb besieged Gaza. Canadian police targets Wet'suwet'en activists. And Jose Ramos Horta wins East Timor election. In our first story, the inaugural conference of the parties to the Escusa Environmental Agreement in, is underway in Chile. The landmark treaty is the first of its kind in the Latin America and Caribbean region. It was approved by the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, or the ECLAC, in 2018. It has been ratified by 12 countries so far, including Argentina, Bolivia, Mexico and Nicaragua. The ratification process is currently pending in Chile's Congress. Social and environmental organizations from 24 countries arrived in Santiago this week for a three-day meeting. President Gabriel Boric stated that the region had the opportunity to find solution for the climate crisis from its own context. He highlighted that those who had contributed the least to the crisis had been hit the hardest by it. The Escazu Agreement is aimed at guaranteeing the full and effective application of key rights. These include access to information, direct public participation and justice regarding environmental matters. It also seeks to provide the right to live in a healthy environment. The agreement is a binding instrument which also focuses on protections for environmental defenders. According to a Global Witness report, Latin America was the deadliest region for activists in 2020. Out of 227 frontline defenders killed last year, three out of every four were from the region. This week's summit will focus on the rules for implementation, funding and the creation of a support committee. Its purpose will be to ensure compliance and implementation of the treaty. Israeli warplanes attacked the besieged Gaza Strip for the second time in a week on April 21st. The military stated that an underground site used for the production of rocket engines was targeted. The Palestinian Wafa News Agency reported that two missiles had been fired in the Zaytun neighborhood south of Gaza City. Residents reported serious damage to property but no human casualties. Missiles were also fired west of the Nusirat refugee camp in central Gaza. Artillery fire was reported in areas east of Khan Yunus and Burej refugee camp. Israel claimed that the attacks were in response to a rocket fired from Gaza which hit southern Israel. It caused light damage to a house but no injuries. Hamas stated that Israel's bombing will only encourage Palestinians to resist the occupation and step up their support for Jerusalem. Israel had also carried out an attack on Gaza on Tuesday. Meanwhile, occupation forces have stormed the Al-Aqsa Mosque at least five times this month. Palestinian worshippers were attacked with tear gas and rubber-coated metal bullets on April 20th. Over 150 Palestinians were injured and hundreds were arrested in similar attacks last week. Over 1,000 Zionist demonstrators attempted to reach the Muslim quarter in Jerusalem on Wednesday. The mob was led by far-right legislator Itamir Ben-Gwir. Chants of deaths to Arabs could be heard as Israeli police blocked the demonstrators from reaching the Damascus Gate. Hamas has warned that Israel should bear responsibility for the consequences of dangerous and provocative moves. Canadian police have re-escalated the targeting of indigenous land defenders in the Wet'suwet'en territory. On April 19th, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or the RCMP, conducted two invasions in the unceded land. Two people were detained on claims of mistaken identity. A day prior, another Wet'suwet'en supporter was briefly arrested on similar allegations. Indigenous activists at the Giddington checkpoint have said that the detentions followed weeks of intimidation and harassment. Since March, the RCMP has reportedly made over 100 visits to residences in the indigenous lands. Activists say that the area has been under constant surveillance since January. At the time, protesters had announced a strategic retreat from Camp Coyote. 
The occupation was set up in 2021 to block a major drill site of the coastal gas link pipeline. The project will carve through 22,000 square kilometers of land of the Wet'suwet'en community. Construction has continued in violation of an eviction order issued by the hereditary chiefs in 2020. The local community's years-long struggle has been met with highly militarized repression by the police. The RCMP reportedly spent close to $750,000 in November and December alone to suppress the resistance. According to a report published by the Aboriginal People's Television Network, federal officials are also keeping a watch on possible coalition building. This includes ties between the Wet'suwet'en activists and anti-logging Mohawk groups in Ferry Creek, Vancouver. And finally, we look at the results of the presidential elections in East Timor. With all ballots counted, Jose Ramos Horta has secured a landslide victory. He won with 62.9% of the votes against incumbent leader and president Francisco Guterres, who secured 37.9%. Around 860,000 people were eligible to vote in the second round of election held on April 19th. A voter turnout of 75% was reported on Sunday. Ramos Horta had taken the lead in the first round of voting held in March, securing a share of 46%. However, he failed to secure the necessary majority and headed to the second round with Guterres. The current president, who belongs to the left-wing Fretilin party, had secured 22% of the votes. Ramos Horta is a Nobel laureate and previously served as president between 2007 and 2012. He belongs to the center-left National Congress for Timorese Reconstruction, or CNRT, led by Shanana Guzmo. The election took place at a time of increasing polarization and tensions in East Timor. The CNRT and Fretilin have dominated the country's political scene since the first democratic elections in 2001. Ramos Horta campaigned on the promise to bridge differences and promised dialogue across political spectrum. Other issues include poverty elevation and stabilizing the shortage of necessary supplies. An estimated 42% of East Timor's population lives below the poverty line. Ramos Horta is set to take office on May 20th. There are concerns that he might push for fresh parliamentary elections before the polls scheduled for 2023. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.